Yo, what's good? What's going on, everyone? Hope you're having a great day. It's Neff, and today I'm going to be going through the best Mythic Plus builds for uh, Venthyr DH right now. Uh, I know a lot of people in my Discord and the Havoc Discord have been, you know, asking the same question over and over again. What's the best build for Mythic Plus? Um, there is three different builds right now that people are trying, um, but there are many more that are out there. Um, but there's three main builds that people are... Uh, kind of set on right now and uh it's kind of a preference they do about the same damage one comes out a little bit on top uh in my opinion and from my experience and from my testing and uh yeah we're gonna get into those in a second but before we start the video i do want to shout out my discord if you're not in there i highly recommend you join my discord uh there's a lot of havoc dh players in there a lot of high level players um you know 3k io players and you know we talk about different things uh havoc related demon hunter related um just anything in the game really so if you're looking for a community to join uh highly recommend joining my discord and 99 percent of the time you can get your question answered in there uh if you have any my discord is also where you get my ui um so my ui is available for my twitch subs uh, so there's a link in the description you can go to my twitch sub to me on twitch link your twitch account with your discord account and join my discord and then you'll have all my ui stuff um in a channel category thing uh, that you can download it's an installer you know it's like nine different steps it's literally click click buttons and it'll auto install all of the add-ons all the profiles and everything for you i just want to do one more little shout out before we get into this video only about 11 percent of people that watch these videos are actually subbed so if you're not subbed and you're watching this video i would really appreciate it if you hit that sub button uh, helps me out with the algorithm helps me out with uh, growing my channel and it's just a really big help it's free it takes two seconds while you're here if you enjoy the video i'd really appreciate it if you hit that sub button all right so enough of the shout outs uh we're gonna get into this video now so first things first i'm just gonna go through the three most popular builds that people are uh kind of set on using right now and uh we'll check out the talents soulbind conduits and everything legendary everything like that so yeah let's just get into this so this first build is the build that i highly recommend you know i've done a couple 21s with it i've done some 20s with it um, and you know, I've averaged 16 to 18 K overall on these keys. This build is my favorite, uh, does a ton of boss damage, does some pretty good AOE outside of meta. And this build is probably best if you have four set, if you don't have the four set, uh, one of the other builds might be better that we're going to go through here in a second. As you can see, the talents here is blind fury, insatiable hunger, glaive tempest, cycle of hatred and demonic. And what's really good about this build, uh, with the four set is you spend a ton of fury and you generate a lot of fury. Um, so with the four set, you get CDR on meta, which meta is our biggest cooldown right now um, for AOE and single target anything. Um, so getting that on the shortest cooldown you possibly can during a Mythic Plus dungeon is uh, top priority. And especially with the CDR relics, you can get your meta down, from my experience, to about a two and a half minute cooldown, sometimes shorter. Um, if you have bowed routing or you just get unlucky you can get it down to a three minute cooldown easily. And, you know, like I said, having meta on the shortest cooldown you possibly can is definitely top priority because when you go into a big pull, you know, 20 mods, you're going to sustain 70K, just some pretty crazy damage. Uh, so the Soulbind, Theotar, Soothing Shade, eh, gives Mastery. Mastery is not very good for us, but it is something. Um, we're running Triple Potency, Relentless Onslaught, Dancing with Fate, Growing Inferno. And then Party Favors is what's really good. Um, obviously the T, I have Verse T right now. I think the priority for T's, or the best T's that you can get are Haste, and then Crit, and then Verse, and then Primary stat is uh, the last. I think that's the priority for it, but I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to do some more sims on that. So the next build, we're pretty much just replacing Relentless Onslaught for uh, increased scrutiny and then we're replacing cycle of hatred with first blood this build does some decent damage outside of meta uh, that's like the main thing people are concerned about with demon hunter uh and through demon hunter that is doing damage outside of meta um and in my experience the build before this it does a bit more damage outside of meta it does like 2k 3k more but what's pretty cool about this build is it synergizes really well with the cdr relic um you're not going to have as much time off of meta because you don't spend as much fury because First blood is, you know, half the cost, even more. And you don't generate as much fury because uh, you don't have the CDR on I-beam. So you don't generate that free 120 fury uh, just for doing an I-beam. Uh, so you don't spend as much fury and you don't generate as much fury. But with first blood, it synergizes very well with the CDR relic because when you have the CDR re relic buff, you can just spam blade dances and death sweeps for, you know, 10 seconds straight. So with good lineups with the CDR relic, this can do some pretty good damage. But again, like I said, 
you know you don't spend as much fury so you don't have uh the shorter cooldown on meta so so your meta is going to be around like a three minute cooldown maybe a little bit more uh just depending on routing and everything so the next build we'll take a look at is with draven so the next build we'll take a look at is draven uh we're doing double potency built for war and battlefield presence is pretty good I think this build is a giga trap because if you do anything above, you know, like a, a 20 or even like an 18 or 19 key, uh, you're going to be taking a lot more damage and you're not going to be above 80% health. But most of the time you don't fall below 50% health unless you fuck up. So it could potentially be good. Um, just depends on the dungeon. It depends on if there's like, you know, just environment damage going on pretty much um, or just like passive aoe damage or you're getting targeted a lot which sucks but i think this build is a big fucking trap uh because you're not gonna have a ton of uptime on this uh the battlefield presence is pretty good it falls off when there's more than five targets um but so i could see this potentially being good in a couple dungeons uh you could either use the first blood build or the cycle of hatred build with this but for right now i'm not really gonna entertain this uh, especially on training dummies because it's I'm gonna have a 100% uptime on build for war and it's just not gonna be anywhere near to what a real you know pull would look like so the legendary we're gonna be using with all of these builds is gonna be collective anguish it's our best in AoE it makes it really easy to keep up your sinful brand for a long time uh, whether you're using cycle of hatred or not so we're gonna go ahead and test these builds out on the training dummy and we'll see what the damage breakdowns look like and everything like that So we're done with the test, we'll take a look at the damage breakdown, um, but we're just going to take a quick look and then we'll do another test and then we'll compare the results. So the next build we're testing here is Cycle of Hatred, pretty much the same thing. Just replacing First Blood with Cycle of Hatred and then replacing Increased Scrutiny with Relentless Onslaught. So people keep asking me how to play this build. Um, the way I recommend doing it is, you know, Sinful Brand is priority. Um, even though it's a single target ability, it does, it's going to do your top damage. Uh, when you throw it on the, the longest living target so pretty much what you want to do you just want to track your sinful brand and your i beam cooldown and make sure your i beam cooldown will always be shorter than your sinful brand duration uh so basically what i do when i go into a pull i'll immolation or a demon's bite to get fury then i'll sinful brand the priority target i beam and then once i i beam i'll death sweep and glaive tempest and then i'll go to spamming chaos strikes and annihilations until my I beam cooldown is shorter than my sinful brand duration. So I'll show you how it goes right now. Trinket, Amora, Demon Spite, Sinful Brand, I beam, Death Sweep, Glaive Tempest, and we're just spamming Annihilations and Chaos Strikes. So our I beam is already shorter cooldown than our sinful brand duration. So we're safe just to pop a Glaive Tempest, Amora. I beam death sweep out of that and we're just spamming chaos strikes and immolations or annihilations so we'll take a quick look at the damage breakdown now um as you can see, we had Sinful Brand up on two targets uh, for like 10 seconds, but for the most part, it was on one target and it ended up being our top damage. Um, and that was only basically single target, uh, somewhat two target uh, damage. So I think one thing people do is underestimate the actual damage that Sinful Brand does uh, by itself. As you can see here, it did a ton of damage, 100% uptime, um, essentially. Glaive Tempest was our second, Immolation Aura, Immolation Aura third, I-Beam, we had two more I-beams in this build than we did with the other build. Um, and I think it did about double the damage, right? It did 122k with three I-beams. 
just did 215k with five i beams fell dev did 143k five i beams and fell dev did 87k so i beam and fell dev just with two more i beams are basically doing double the damage uh with the first blood build our death sweep did 202k with the cycle of hatred build our death sweep did 130k and we only did five death sweeps uh we got kind of unlucky with cdr on the i beam um, with the cycle of hatred so we couldn't throw out a couple more death sweeps because we had to keep spamming annihilation to uh reduce the cdr or to reduce the cd on um, i beam uh, but overall the cycle of hatred build did more damage it's going to do better boss damage it's going to do better priority damage as you can see our chaos strike with the first blood build did 95k and our annihilation did 57k <clears throat> And our annihilations with the cycle of hatred build did double the damage our chaos strike did a bit more damage so that's what the damage looks like outside of meta we'll do another test where we go inside of meta and uh we'll take a look at the breakdowns there so we're going to start off with the first blood build um we just replace relentless onslaught with free scrutiny and replace cycle of hatred with first blood All right, so we ended it at about 26k, uh, stopping at a minute and a half. Uh, this is what the damage breakdown looks like. Central Brand doing our top damage, Death Sweep second, Glaive Tempest third. Change to the other build, then we'll compare the breakdowns uh, after meta comes off CD. So again, it's pretty much the same thing with this uh, Cycle of Hatred build. You just want to prioritize keeping up Central Brand over anything else. And once you do that, you can Death Sweep and Glaive Tempest. So our sinful brands are going to keep going, but we ended at about 34k, 33.5k at 130. Look at the first blood build. Our sinful brand did about 650k, 27% uh, of our damage. Death Sweep did 400k, we got 12 cast. Uh, Glaive Tempest did 360k, we got 7 cast. Uh, we'll take a look at the Cycle of Hatred build. Sinful brand did about almost triple the damage uh, with a 100% uptime on all five targets. And as you can imagine, this is gonna scale even more uh, with the more targets that you bring into the pull. Double the amount of targets to 10 and uh, like a decent size M plus pull. And this is gonna do around 3 million damage, uh, <laughs> which is a lot. We got seven Glaive Tempest off. I think that's the exact uh, amount we got in the Cycle of Hatred, or the first, yeah. So both builds, we got seven Glaive Tempest. Uh, we got 12 Death Sweeps with the first Blood build. And we got nine with the cycle of hatred build uh and as you can see overall uh the cycle of hatred build did significantly more damage uh almost a million more damage and that's thanks to basically sinful brain being up 100 percent of the time uh so when you're in meta you know you can pretty much do the same amount of death sweeps and your sinful brain will do double the damage because it'll have 100% uptime. And like I said earlier, you have meta way more often with the Cycle of Hatred build because you're generating more fury because you have more I-beams. We can look here, we had six I-beams here. The first blood build, we had four I-beams. So that's 240 more fury that we're spending and generating uh, than the first blood build. So that's just more CDR on meta which meta is a ridiculous AOE cooldown right now, which should be our top priority. Is as you can see with the meta with the Cycle of Hatred build, we just do, you know, insane amount of, an insane amount of damage, sustaining almost 35k uh, on five targets. And one thing that, another thing that people sleep on with Sinful Brand is its defensive capabilities. 
uh, reduces melee attack speed and casting speed by 30%. So it makes it easier to get kicks uh, if you have longer kicks in your group. And it just helps the tank survive uh, with a 30% melee attack speed. So having Sinful Brand up on every single target in a huge 20 target pull is massive for the tank. Yeah, play what you want, play what you think is best, play what you think is comfortable for you. Uh, if you don't like spamming a bunch of Annihilations, then don't play this build, don't play the Cycle of Hatred build, play the First Blood build. Um, they do relatively the same damage outside of meta, um, but when it comes to meta windows, um, Cycle of Hatred build wins by uh, almost, you know, a hundred times fold, you know, it's just the, <laughs> the sinful brand damage is, is outrageous. Take what you want with this information, do what you want with it, play whatever build you want, play what you think is fun. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, both are pretty viable. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I got for you guys. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, peace.